Welcome back. So uh, today I'm just trying to remember how the horsey moves and stuff like that. I would love to play in this simul here. That simul does look very attractive, I just don't have time for it right now. But um, yeah, I signed up for an IRL tournament. That's going to be a bit of an adventure. I don't usually do those um, because I have so much I have to learn. But yeah, uh, tournament's going to happen a week from now, so uh, the better I can be prepared for it, um, the more fun that we could have at the actual event. Oh, am I going to get to play a Grunfeld here? Yeah, let's do it. This is not how I usually play, um, but since we're playing Blitz, we're going to try this out. And this would be just a good refresher. I think it's, yeah, that's the most popular line here. Um, and I'm trying to remember if I play c5 straight away. Okay, but here, isn't it knight d7? Or am I conflating or confusing that with some other line? Um, I think knight d7 is fine. I sense my opponent's just playing impulsively and is not really thinking about their moves. Um, so that said, I think I can actually take here. Much unlike most of the Grinfeld lines, I think this is an exception to the rule. Um, this will fix my space deficit. Um, right. So I think either that or Knight Takes was forced because of their weird move order they took here. Um, made sure to play that straight away so that... Uh, well, here I continue my development. Oh shit. I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is not good, folks. Uh, this is seriously not good. Wow. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's try this. This is not going to work. This is so not going to work. Holy moly. I'd like to blame my lack of sleep for this one. Um. But this is pretty outrageous. Oh my goodness. Alright, that's what I get for playing a Grunfeld and not knowing the theory. Moral of the story uh, for the upcoming tournament, don't play the Grunfeld. Play the King's Indian. I have a pretty good record with it. I should stick with what I know. Alright, we'll just develop the pieces. You know, we're down four points. It's only four. Nah. So, we sacked, apparently, for emotional compensation, which is pretty great. Um, okay. Here's the cheapo. It doesn't even work. Or does it? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not getting away with that cheapo. Um, here, let's go for another one. Let's just pry this open straight away. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, screw this. Well played. You got me. Ouch. <laughs> I don't know. There was something weird about that move order. Um, so, let's play this. I think this is a closed Sicilian. I don't know the close Sicilian either, so why am I playing this? I don't know. It's fun, I guess. Um, I think I did this okay. And now I think I'm supposed to let these run, but maybe A4 is also fine. Um, and I think A4 somehow just helps him. All right, let's push this, because this seems fun.
Um, let's just keep pushing. So we kick the knight, and then I just develop. I have a feeling I'm going to learn a thing or two about the Close Sicilian right here and right now. <laughs> um, as in, I'm probably playing it entirely incorrectly. Like, surely whatever I'm doing here is almost entirely mistaken. Um, so, oh, he actually did retreat. I was expecting him to take so I could snap on h5 more easily. He didn't oblige me, though. So, big threat in my mind is e6, which is just kind of looming here. I'm not sure what to make of it, other than I can't play bishop e3. Um, so this is awkward. If he plays e6, I'll have to retreat, but then he... Eh, why don't I retreat prophylactically? And this way, yes, he can play e6 and d5, but it's going to take him some time to do it. But what else is he going to do? Um, whereas my knight might have a home on h6, I don't really know. Oh, also, I hung the f-pawn. So probably he should have just taken that. Uh, let's transfer the knight and, like, not hang this. Um... Okay, we're blaming the lack of sleep at this point. There's no other excuse. Although, the uh, lack of sleep excuse is hardly sufficient to explain what's going on. It's mostly because I'm just a dummy. <laughs> I have so much to learn. Um, so, can I push f5, f6 here? Um, maybe. Um, let's push c4, which seems ridiculous, but I could play rook b1, b3, and bishop b2 to oppose this. And yes, I've given away the d4 square, but I don't think that's such a big deal here. Um, I think d5 is more valuable than d4 here. Okay, now that's just weird. Um, I kind of get the motivation. Um, okay, well, let's activate the rook. Why not? Let's play ball. So, his knight wants to go to g3 there. Um, I just want to make sure not to walk into a fork. It's like the only thing I need to look out for are all the knight forks. Um, oh, well, this is interesting, isn't it? This allows my rook to go to d1 to oppose that. And suddenly I'm no longer considering f5 because it, it just isn't interesting anymore. Much more interesting is just taking the center. Um, so if I just had a tempo to play bishop e3, that'd be good. I'm not getting that tempo, am I? We'll fight for it. We'll see if I can finally... I expect he's going to check me, because, like, that's a good developing move. This is not a good developing move. Um, because it doesn't develop a piece. Um... Why not? Let's go where the wind, wherever the wind may take us. I'm still interested in this f5 square, so I'm going to play rook c1 instead of queen c1. I have this covered by the queen, so I'm not too concerned. 
If need be, I could tuck my king in on g3. Um, okay. Well, this just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I finally see the point of what he's doing. And that's okay. He wins some material. I probably win a king here, so... It's, looks like a wash. Um, also, I'm in time pressure. Which is going to make this more fun for everybody. So I want to go up to c3 and then rook h1. Or maybe I go to b2 and rook h1, I don't know. Somehow I need to get my rook over here. Um, how about d2? I'm being super indecisive, which is not helpful. Um, let's guess this square. Yeah, no, I'm not intending to stick around very long, and given that I'm promoting a website, um, I don't feel like dropping an ad in Lee Chess's homepage. Uh, I could add it, but I'm not going to be sticking around very long this morning. Um, okay, there is an increment. I didn't forget to add an increment here. Um... Well, this is going to get pretty wild, is it not? Um, take my rook. Please take my rook. Ah, oh, he didn't take the rook. All right, well, rip me. <laughs> uh... Oh, nice. Well spotted. Um, so yes, yeah, something happened that game. A lot of things happened that game. My opponent wants another rematch, so I'm not going to get a chance to analyze this. Oh, um, yeah, I live in Illinois. Oh boy, here we are, another Grinfeld. Maybe this one I won't mess up as badly. Here, let's just castle straight away and delay c5 and see what he plays here. Yeah, Illinois got a pretty competitive chess scene. Usually I throw in c5 because that's the book move, but here we're doing something up other than the book. So, um... Okay, let's play c5 now. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, queen c7 or something. I don't remember all the book, but I think this is pretty close. Right. Um, and let's see. How does this go from here? Um, so he plays knight to e2 because uh, this way I don't get to pin the knight. But I think black gets a freer hand in the center because this knight's not threatening to jump into e5 or g5. Um, oh nice. Okay, so we oppose this diagonal here, and he plays a4, which I think makes sense. <sighs> We're going to have to look this one up afterward and see just how well I did. Um, um, I didn't expect him to take that. Okay, let's just keep developing. I'm concerned about rook b1. But I have this awesome knight e5 or knight a5 stuff. 
Oh. Is this a thing? I don't remember Queen B6 being a thing in this opening. Um, so I'm hitting this and hitting that. Now granted, if I take A4, he just uh, shish kebabs my pieces. Well, except now his bishop's on A2, so this is, a, this is just a free pawn. Um, so black is equalized. Well, uh, I'll take it. Nice. So apparently I did okay here, but I still think, um, in terms of tournament play, I should just stick with the King's Indian, because I've got a positive track record with that. Um, all right. Wait. Do I have a tic-tac? No, rook d2 is not a tic-tac. Or a tactic. Depending on your regional dialect. Uh, here, let's just put this on a square. I like how ace rook calls those tic-tacs, though. It's much more fun than tactics. Um... So, we're just going to undermine this queen side, which is already quite difficult for his rook to like move to squares on the queen side. So if I start attacking on this side of the board, something's going to come loose. Or so I hope. Um, knight d4 is what crossed my mind a couple moves ago. Um, yeah, knight d4 is not bad. Let's do it. I still feel like I should have better than that somewhere here, but I just don't see it. Alright, so now... Um, we're going to pile up on whatever pawn is the easiest to target, but also threaten to push the a pawn. And if I have to, I can push e5, but I shouldn't have to just yet. Yeah, I use the 3D board because I think that helps when I actually go to a chess club. Um, oh, wait a second. Hold the phone. Boop. Alright, so I'm just up a clean pawn. I can convert this. It's the rook c8 here that's not so obvious. Like, if we had traded and he gotten to play pawn to b7, that's less clear than what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is me just taking all the open files and all the open ranks, and everything's just mine. Um, there's a check. Right, so just need to be patient. And if necessary, I could push the A-pawn to decoy his rooks, but this should not be hard. Even with 29 seconds, this should be pretty not difficult. So he intends to double the rooks on the D-file. I immediately stop that doubling and just go back, and I've got the C-file under control and all the key squares on my side of the board. So next step is just to pick up the pawn. Which he's going to play rook b1 to stop. And the question is, do I play uh, rook b5 to collect? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Only because he pushed e5, which gave me the tempo to get this in, uh, forking the rook and the pawn. And if I'm up two pawns, this gets even easier. So, yeah, he's got... well, he didn't have any choice, really.
I'm amused that he's playing this out, but also bewildered. Like, uh, do you even chess? Do you even chess? Alright, we're up three pawns. Is three good enough? Or do I need to win a fourth one? Alright, you're in check, buddy. Okay. I see. See, we've gone all in on trying to collect this F pawn there. Um, I just might let him take the F pawn, honestly. Dude, why are you playing this out? What the heck? Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> I know I played some bad moves in the last... Wow. And he just leaves. He doesn't even want a rematch. Uh, well? Good games, I guess? I know I played some bad moves, but... Like, give me some credit. That's pretty funny. Here, let's analyze the game for posterity's sake. Um, no, but most I'm most curious about this opening and what happened here. Uh, so these are cached engine evaluations saying this is even-ish. So we're following, I'm playing in the footsteps of Magnus Carlsen, playing against Vishwanathan and Anand here. That's exactly what we're doing. Um, so castle, c5, queen c7, all right, so what do I do here? Knight c6 is the most popular master move. Um, but no, we're playing in the footsteps of Georgia Erdius, playing against uh, Mihail Marin. All right, so that's the game that we're following, I guess. But we detoured from it. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this opening. I think I... So rook d8 seems like a lost tempo. I should have just played like knight c6 apparently. Or at least that's the most popular move, and that transposes back into the book. Where after rook d8's a lot more popular. Um, and I guess a6 is a squandered tempo as well, which accounts for my failure to get back into book. Queen b3 is nowhere on this list. Um... Whereas after I played rook d8 and a6, then queen b3, I guess, was possible. Because a6 is, like, not a very good move. Um, yeah, apparently I don't decide what to do with this bishop c8 and rook a8 until later in this line. Um, yeah, no, that's correct. Yeah, uh... That Carlson and Anand, both being world champions, are kind of at the level of Federer and uh, Nadal. So, uh, yeah, that's clearly what we were doing in this casual blitz game here, is just following in the footsteps of the world's greatest players. Um, oh, that's right, I remember. So, the point of, like, point of, like, doing this move ordering stuff uh, is that even in lines where sometimes white gets to play this, um, you, like, sack the f-pawn, and then, whoops, no, the queen can't move there. That's the point. So, this, like, instantly equalizes. Right. Uh, so yeah, white just has to guard the bishop, and then that's just pleasant for black. So that's how that normally goes. Um, apparently, we detoured pretty heavily from book. Um, oh, so when it completely shocked me that he took here, um, I guess I'm right to be shocked? I mean, no human's going to play bishop d3, but it makes sense here to get out of the way of this like potential discovery or this potential fork. Um, and this just 
prepares, I don't know, to play f4 and d5 and whatever else white wants to play in the center. Um, so this is just a patient game that we have to play here. And that's going to be challenging. So I just keep developing. Just never mind that I've given away the pawn. And then I was also shocked by this queen b6, which allowed me to transpose in... Well, allowed me to collect the a-pawn, I guess. What I missed was that this is a discovery. Um, so yeah, this queen b6 just gives the pawn back immediately and gives uh, black all the compensation in the world. Um, really, any queen move or any other move would have been better. Um, so that's unfortunate uh, for my opponent. So we were both very confused as to what was going on here. Uh, yeah, we could go back and take a look at how Carlson played this stuff. Where was that? Here we are. Anand Carlson, 2011. Um, so here's their game where, yeah, this is the main move, c5, queen d2, there are a couple captures already. Um, yeah, they just develop their pieces, you know? Each move has a purpose. It's kind of unlike some of my play, where I just play moves and then try to figure out the purpose later. Yep, and they just kept trading pieces, and... Um, uh, when do they trade more pieces here? Is this the one where they played down to, like, bear kings or something. I forget. No, this is... okay. Yeah. Super exciting game. <laughs> Not really, but... Um, so that's how they played it. Let's go back a game. Um, I'm curious what happened... well, honestly, in the first two games we played um, this stream. So game one being another uh, Nidorf no, not Nidorf, another uh, Grinfeld. So this one was a lot sharper. Um, oh, here's how I get my opening book. I forgot it automatically shows me that. Um, so against bishop b5 check, uh, knight c6 tends to draw, bishop d7 Hmm. Has only been played six times, and White's never won. But that's kind of confusing to me. Well, I guess this is not a very common position. Uh, Stockfish prefers Knight C6 over um, my Knight D7. But what are our thoughts about this move? Just allowing a bishop trade. It seems it's playable. How does this typically go? Queen takes seems to make sense to me. Um, knight f3 and knight e2. Uh, I'm not sure I fully get what's going on there. It's pretty complicated. So, let's go back. I'm sorry, What? so I should opt for knight c6 even though it's super counterintuitive here. Um, apparently that's the book move. And black does intend to castle very speedily. What most concerned me was that this is d5 is uh, looming on the horizon. Even if tactics don't immediately favor it, which kind of surprises me. Um, why doesn't d5 I mean, I know it gives up the rook, but how bad is that? It seems like that's an exchange sacrifice where white would be eager to make. Um, oh. Black doesn't take the rook. Wait, so rook b1, and then we go back. And so why did white play rook b1 here? Why not just snap this? 
Um, I guess it's six one way, half dozen the other way, but white's not better here. Black has already equalized, and white has not castled and won't get to castle. So I guess that's the point. Huh. So anyway, uh, we went off the beaten path here, as I typically do. So yeah, my opponent played this knighty to developing move, and I just wanted to resolve the tension here. Which might not have been a good thing, but it somehow worked out. And then apparently queen a5, oh right, that was the thing where I just dropped a piece, which is pretty great. And, of course, I'm dropping more material trying to trick my opponent instead of just willingly complying and going into this completely dead-lost endgame. Which I could have done. Oh, I didn't see this move. This would have forced queen d4 and queen e5, and then we could get a queen trade. And, okay, black's still down a piece, but... Um, it's not so obvious how white wins it, but white's white's got the extra piece, so what's the point? Um, but yeah, my queen a5 just blows it outright. I need to not drop this, um, but apparently if I just play queen c7, I'm fine. So that was interesting. Uh, but the other thing I'm curious about is the other blitz game we just played. Um, where we blew it again in pretty spectacular fashion. How did we blow it this time? Uh, I forget. Oh, we played a closed uh, Sicilian. And I don't really know how the closed Sicilian works. Okay, so h3 is fine. g4 is fine. Knight e2 is the typical move here. I see. So instead of trying to force my way through d5, which ended up being a major headache, turns out there's a much more elegant solution for transferring your pieces to the king's side. Now it says that these, at the master level, this is always drawn, which is to say that probably there's some not ideal moves by both players. Um. But I wonder what. D3 and H3 are both popular. I knew D3, but here's where my book knowledge ended. So apparently H3 is the most popular move, and I guess the system just seldom gets played at master level, or we just don't have many games of it in the database. Um. <laughs> So, alright, so we're off the beaten path already, and uh, apparently I'm considerably worse for it. G5 was much too early. Um, yeah, allowing knight h5 apparently is a big problem in the system. So, yeah, I drop my pawn, my opponent doesn't take it. Oh, I'm not better here. Oh, but if I just, like, drop back to d1, um, I guess this way, with the queen on d1, I don't give up, like, the d4 square so easily. Or I don't give up, like, on b1, I'm giving up a lot of squares, but I thought my opponent was playing so poorly or non-aggressively that I could afford such slack moves. Um, where was this a problem? Oh, right, that. I missed that. So that's where things fell apart there. So that's some very highly tactically alert play for my opponent. Um, combined with my just disregard for this knight h5, because I thought it was a motif in the close Sicilian to sack on h5. Apparently that sack is just not something to be considered there. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. 
Well, it looks like we're not getting one more there. Let's play a couple bullet games and call it call that the stream. It looks like we're not getting a bu oh there we are. Here we go. Yeah, get it. It's fun to play this stuff, this uh, Queenie 2 French. Um, let's see. Have I misplayed this yet? Oh, maybe I taking on c6 was not so bright. I don't know. Either way, this is like way more fun than your typical French. Um, um, okay, fine. Oops, I dropped d4. Didn't need it. Didn't want it. Alright, so we'll go back. I need some plan here. I say that, and then I move a piece just randomly um, for lack of a plan. This is pretty great. Oh, yeah, I guess I missed that. Okay, we'll develop here, I guess. Um, this is not going well. <laughs> Everything is hanging. Oops, there's my queen. Okay. Not bad, not bad. How did I get a 2,000 bullet rating? Okay, if my opponent doesn't want a rematch, that's totally fine. Okay, so what went wrong other than being out of book on move 3? Uh, d4 was probably too much, or at least I should learn how to play it. I thought knight e5 was just winning, but it isn't. Um, so because it's not winning on the spot, there's really no reason to play it. Um... Unless, like, I can get away with bishop f4. Oh wait, no, he's got knight d5 and all this stuff. So how does this go? Knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, rook b8, castle, should b7, takes, takes. So I did this, everything according to exactly what the engine would have done. But then I had to realize that my targets are on the queen side and keep moving there. And I just didn't realize that. Who'd have known you could play positional games in Bullet? Who'd have thunk it? 12. 11. 10. 9. Well, I guess we'll play this as going to be the last one. Or if he doesn't move, then we'll play a different one. But, um... We're going to try to wrap this up at some point. So yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. It's been good fun. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Nope. <laughs> Just kidding there. Alright. Okay. Uh, let's put the king over here.
Isn't this exciting? Look at this exciting position. And all its exciting excitingness. Oh, hey, look, we got an imbalance, finally. Oops, I screwed up. Yep, 2100 got me. Oh, they insist on a rematch. I guess we'll have to. Alright, we'll play a good game this time. Maybe. Uh, I did not intentionally trap that. Um, I was just trying to play a good game, but... Um, such as bullet. Of course they're going to ask for a rematch because of the way that played out. Um, and of course I'll have to accept it because I have some degree of honor. How am I going to... Oh, that answers some of my development problems. That answers the question of how do I develop my pieces. Um, some of these moves he's making are a little bit predictable, so that makes it easier for me to retort with my replies immediately. Shit. Jeez. Oh, sucks. Damn it! <laughs> so close and so far away. I'm too slow. Well, okay. Well, we need something to cool down after that. Let's do a puzzle. That was pretty intense. But yeah, um, I'm not fast enough. Never was, never will be. So I have to just play good moves instead. It sure felt like I had that, though, didn't it? I mean, come on. So, the trick here is to avoid the queen trade so that I can sack on e5 and just win the rook. So, yeah. Easy. 1700 tactic. Actually fairly decent. Pretty unpopular because it's cheesy, but whatever. Or because uh, the opponent just plays queen takes there. Um, yeah, one more here. So, I want to take something. The most interesting thing to take is on e6, but I don't think that leads anywhere. If I take on e4, takes e4, takes e4, takes e4 takes e6, takes e6... Oh wait, I've got three pieces hitting e4. They only have two. So I should be able to win a pawn here. But... Uh, there's gotta be better, right? Maybe I just go knight b5. Maybe there's just one of those knight b5 sorts of positions. No, the sack is no good. Um, 
What other stock sacrifices are there? I don't think there are any. So I should just take the pawn. But then he plays d5, and like my center gets crushed. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This is goofy. Oh, wait, could I take twice on f6? Maybe that's the real target here. Takes, and he takes on d3. Um. So what after he takes on d3? Or do I take e6, pawn takes, and I sack on f6? He takes back, I take bishop g7. I've given away all my attackers. Yeah, that's no good. Um, I'm just trying to figure, is there some permutation of these moves that sack on e6 and f6 that nets me material? Uh... Rook takes f6, pawn takes d3, rook takes f7, knight takes f knight takes e6, something like that, I don't know. Um, right, so this move doesn't put up much resistance, you just like take right here. And then you take the rook. Um, Far more interesting, and I'm downloading this because I think everything else Black could have done here is more interesting. Um, is what if Black just keeps the tension in the position here? I guess he's down material. You have to move your bishop somewhere, like here, I guess. Or maybe you sack on e6 and try to collect the rook. Um, how do you play this? Oh, everything's good apparently. I need. I know he hasn't like collected on. Oh, e4 is hanging. Duh. All right. So the other challenging thing here is what if he doesn't take the rook? Um. Oh wow, these are better than I thought. How? Okay, so. Um. Apparently rook takes e6 wins the queen. Knight takes e6 similarly would win the queen. Um, because if you try to settle this by force, you sack a rook. And the rook sack results in a checkmate, right? Where's the mate? Check. Block. Bishop takes f6 seems to keep checking and attacking. So the point is, like, the hard move to find in the sequence isn't even in the main line. It's, um, what if black does the sideline of taking the bishop? How does white demonstrate an advantage? So one option for demonstrating an advantage is knight takes. Um, Another option for demonstrating an advantage is rook takes. Um, where that's forced. And I assume. Oh, now. So knight to b5 preserves a small advantage. Knight takes e6 draws. And this check just wins. But black, black can block this check. Um, but this. If black recaptures the bishop here, he gets mated. Um, and how does this work? Either piece to f7 delivers the mate. Oh, because the knight's still here. Holy moly. So this is... This puzzle would be much more interesting if you had to solve all these sidelines, including pawn takes on d3. This knight recapturing the rook is pretty straightforward, because you just take the knight, and now you're threatening to take the rook, and black lets you take the rook, so you take it. This puzzle has so much potential. If it forced you to have to calculate 
uh, the sideline here of um, this capture uh, on D3. Um, where white's only better, I'm sorry, not here, not this taking on D3, uh, taking on D3 back here. Where white's only better by virtue of the fact that he can sacrifice here. Even this sacrifice is good. And it makes sense the sacrifices should be plentiful here, but having to demonstrate them is pretty challenging. Because, like, if you sack here, black could defend by just pulling back. He doesn't have to take, although if he does take, we transpose in the stuff we saw elsewhere. Um, so that's exciting. Here, do we have an easier tactic that we can finish on? Uh, the knight on h2 is defended, so what? It feels like something's trapped here. Like, bishop g3 might trap a rook or something, because if rook g2, rook e1 is mate. Um, so, bishop g3, rook f5, and then what? How does black continue? Does black continue? Or does black have to find a different first move? Um, yes, I don't know. Show me. I give up. Show me the solution. So we check. Oh, that's clever. So yeah, um, I was never going to find that. I like that though, that's clever. Um, how about an easy puzzle? Is there an easy one? Like here, this has got to just be Rook to E8, right? This has to be rook e8. What else could it be? It's not rook e8. It's not the other rook e8. Uh, it's something. I don't know. Show me. Rook f1. And the rook's immune to capture because why? Um, Alright, so if you block on f3, queen takes, and it's the same deal. Uh, so here I assume it's this check. Bishop f2. Nope, that doesn't mate. This one looks nice. And he takes here. So I've missed something. What did I miss? Oh, take on g4. How does that improve anything? How is that an improvement? Um... So, yeah, rook g8 or king h8 um, just wins there. Alright, so I was never going to find all that, but oh well. You know, we tried. We played some good games, we had some good tactics, we had some not so good tactical play on my part. Um, that's why we play. We gotta work off that rust. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.